they're kind of beyond my comprehension because mm-hmm. they're so complex. Yeah. And there's just so many, you look at these big chemical plants or whatever it is, and you just look at all the pipes mm-hmm. everywhere. And you just, I always think, how do they know that all of those are connected in the right way? Like yeah. there's millions of them. Yeah. How do you get all of those right? I yeah. just don't, I, it's so much to look at, so much to comprehend. It's just, it goes beyond. Yeah, it. even if you had the plans of it's like, all right, maybe that's right. Ima- imagine, <laughs> imagine the plan set yeah. for a, 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 an LNG plant. Yeah. Like I can't even imagine. Big. It, yeah, what like just what that plan set looks like? It's, yeah. it's probably it's just monster doc. Probably probably like a hundred and three different plan sets. Yeah, all for one thing. Yeah, it when I was involved when when the company I used to work for we did the expansion of the Mississippi River Bridge at, at the Huey P Long Bridge that goes over the Mississippi River. Yeah, and that was like tons of plan sheets, tons of plans. At East Bank set and a West Bank set, and what this, company was that? So Kiwit. Uh, Massman trailer did a joint venture and wow. they did the expansion and the company I was working for locally at the time, Barrier, we got the Barrier. Yeah, we got yeah. we got the groundwork. All the utility relocates. It it was bad. The like plants didn't match up. You know, it was like yeah. multiple designers. I mean, that's a problem with some of those things. You know, it gets super complicated. Well, and what they're having, so this is the the design, design starting to become a big issue because Mm -hmm. design has the same experience challenge that construction has right now. So you have all these young kids out of school and they don't, they don't tell you in school. I went to engineering school. They don't tell you, Hey, we're not actually teaching you how to do engineering. (laughs) We're just giving you the basics, the theory, but out of school, you don't know anything you don't know anything about design whatsoever and so you're starting from just absolute basics when you go out into the real world and you need a certain amount of years of experience to really grasp how design works right but that's not exactly how things are working right now so you have these people that are very inexperienced designing these bigger and bigger projects these more and more complex projects and then the plans don't make sense. Yeah, for sure. We're seeing that too. The other thing that we're seeing, that, which I actually like, is we are seeing more civil engineers want to come into construction. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're, you know, they'll come intern with us. And I think it always starts innocent. And they're like, let me go get some construction experience before I go sit in the cube for the rest of my life. Yeah. And they get a taste and they're like, wait a second. Like, I could do this. I could actually build some of this stuff. Sure. And of course, the, you know, the worlds that we run in, there, there's sometimes a, a modified approach that you could have, you know. So you do go get into these design assist projects that, you know, you get to weigh in mm-hmm. along the way. Now, you're not designing and stamping plans or like, no, we're not doing that currently. But it's easily something that you could go get into along the way. But these, you know, so these engineers are getting to participate at that level. Yeah, I... um I saw something recently. I'm not going to say their name because I don't know if I want, they want me talking about it or not, but it was a company that I visited and they entitle their own plans. So they do mostly commercial, large mm-hmm. commercial projects. So the plans they're building on for the project mm-hmm. are, are their, their plans. Yeah. So they have three people in their office dedicated to just getting plan sets mm-hmm. to the estimating department to estimate it so they can VE it and really double check that it all will actually make sense when they're building it. Yeah. So there's no finger pointing at the end of the day. And they said it's super effective. Yeah. Which I believe I, I saw that. I was like, why don't more people do that? Yeah. We do something similar. We don't have, we've had like different versions of in-house engineering and architects, especially on the commercial building side. Yeah. We do a lot more of that sort of version, but the design assist that we usually offer, we could go bring the bet. The, like the best engineers, we could go bring the best mm-hmm. architects sure. to, to the process and then go work that version. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that works well. Yeah. I think if you're at scale enough, then you go do it like you said. Yeah. If we've got a couple of different, uh, couple different engineers, architects or whatever working in house and they're doing their own plans and mm-hmm. doing their own developments and here you go. Like, yeah, let, let's roll with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. And I, I think, like to do engineering, you need to have a very specific personality. Mm-hmm. I did not have that personality, but yeah. there, there's a lot of people I went to school with, perfect engineers. Yeah. Like that, 
that's just their mind, how they work, and they are so good at it, and I will never understand it. Yeah. I was always more a theory guy. Yeah. I can't look of look at a drawing of a concrete girder and really understand what's going on. I need to see the damn girder. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, ah, okay. So one side of that is under compression one side of that's under tension i get it like mm-hmm. <laughs> but until i see it i don't i don't understand yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you i don't i don't like get too deep in, and i thought i'm like wait i just like to build stuff like, yeah you, yeah you just, just tell me it's gonna just work and, to build, I, yeah. and i'm gonna build it um so is the company nowadays it's the the bigger side of the company is commercial building yes and then did you help start the whole civil side of yeah. the business? Yeah, in 15, I came over to start the civil side of the business. And yeah. I was employee one, sure. and that was estimating all the work, running all the field work. Uh, first day that I was out there actually doing some work, we you know had a temporary operator that we hired to go break up some roadway. Mm-hmm. And you know I was out there with a whirly bird second grade i mean it was really like boots on the ground yeah you do a little bit of everything it is interesting to be a i've seen i've seen this happen a few times with the commercial builders they'll start a civil division mm-hmm. and you're you're kind of a startup mm-hmm. but within a more established business established yeah. brand that's what it was and and so it's in a lot of ways best of both worlds mm-hmm. where you still get the freedom to build a, yeah. a business how you want to build a business but at the same time you have the brand recognition yeah the infrastructure from a bigger operation. Right. I think it can work with you and against you. But. Yeah, I think definitely, you know, some of the stuff that they had already built out on the business side, it would take so long or you'd have to hire like these people sure. and then like yeah. it probably becomes an issue yeah. to grow and scale at the level that we did. Yeah. You know, so being part of them has been great. Was it, was it, uh, did they have the idea and then they found you to do it or so, were you part of the idea? No. So the Wes Bomzano, the, you know, founder, CEO, he, um, him and I went to grade school together. And so we grew up about five blocks away from each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then high school, we go to two different high schools, college, we go to two separate mm-hmm. directions. And then we run back into each other, you know, locally at a CrossFit gym working out. Nice. And he like, you know, was talking to me and I'm doing well where I was at. And he was, he had just left and was starting up his, or he had, at the, I guess at that point he had left and been gone for a little while from a big commercial builder in mm-hmm. town. And uh, he's like, hey, I think I want to diversify and start a civil business. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm doing pretty well at what I'm, what I'm doing. You know, yeah. I just like wasn't convinced yet. It took a little while to come around. We talked for probably like eight months or something like that. And then finally came around to it and took the plunge. Because you were doing pretty big civil work. Yeah. I guess if you were for that, that size, like how big is Perrier? They were, at the time I was there, probably 200 million, 220 million yeah, or something like that. So like, I'd say like, mid mid size civil yeah. contract like mid to bigger civil contractor yeah well, especially for that market probably it's big. yeah that's that's big i mean look yeah. we're heavy into dotd over there and i yeah. did a lot of that work i did a lot of the, you know some of the bigger complicated projects i was came off of like one complicated interstate project and i was happy to not be on the next one mm-hmm. you know it's just you, you could get a little bit of brain damage from some of those things the big the the big pro the big projects it's like all I don't know. Sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't at all. Yeah. It, it, sometimes it's the probably the worst project ever. And yeah. Just never ending. But yeah. the big the big projects are cool because they have the big quantities yeah. and the fast schedules and the big iron and all these different subcontractors. But at the same time, what I was worried about getting out of school especially was getting pigeonholed into being like the striping guy. Yeah. That was in charge of striping from mile marker x to mile marker y brutal <laughs> and i like i didn't want to do that yeah so there's like there you can get lucky on a big job or <laughs> yeah i think i actually like had a really lucky path I, I like came into the business and so i didn't get into construction actual construction until i was like 27 eight years old something like that hmm. uh, i was i came out of college and then i went to go work for a rental equipment company Mm. And I was there and I was like started a month before Hurricane Katrina. No shit. Yeah. So like my first Saturday, like they hired me because the two like seasoned guys that were there were like tired of working Saturdays. These guys at the time, and wow. I, I, like, I, I thought they were like so old at the time. They were like 32 and like 34. And they, were, they had like families and they were tired of working Saturdays. So they hired me, this kid out of, out of school. 
to like come like help out and work Saturdays. Was it heavy equipment rental? Yeah, it was, it was, it was her. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was over there. And, uh, so first Saturday I go work by myself, Hurricane Katrina is coming through. Wow. And so it's like, you know, just got baptized real fast, you know, and and like this craziness. So, you know, we had all these deals set up with like these plants and, and, you know, you would have like these, uh, uh, air compressor and power generation contracts. So we had to like activate all of them and like ship all, all these like generators, uh, calling in drivers and yeah. we're going crazy. And, um, you know, I, I, I rent every generator we have in the, in the building, you know, like all this like craziness that goes on. And then like I leave that day and then I don't come back to that branch for like a couple of weeks because Hurricane Katrina comes through, we lose power. You can't get back in the town, you know? So yeah. I like, I go evacuate to a hunting camp we have in Mississippi. And I end up at this other hunting camp that, that we had at the time we had two. And then I end up in Baton Rouge working and, and we finally make our way back, back down. So like, I, that's where I started was in that business. And then sales just wasn't for me. Yeah. You know, so I did like this inside sales for them for a while. And that was great. You know, you got to talk to a lot of customers. They wanted to talk to you because they're calling you on the phone. Mm-hmm. And then like the path, the progress over there is like, well, you got to go do outside <clears throat> sales. And so I go do outside sales. I'm like, yeah, you know, like not really my thing. Yeah. You know, so I did that for a little while. And then my uncle called me up. He worked at, at Big B at the time. And he's like, hey, you know, I, we got this position. It was like ground floor, like field engineer, like come, come over here. I think you'd be really good at it. And I'm like, okay, no problem. And I'm like, at the time I was making good money in sales, like for a 20, whatever year old, 26 mm-hmm. year old, 27 year old. Yeah. And I'm like making more money than most of my friends, not working very much doing sales, but zero job satisfaction. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it just didn't click for me. So go take a, a job, you know, making, I don't know, $20,000, $30,000 less than whatever I was. And have to go hustle again, but it was great. Like right when I got in, I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah, I, I was um, talking to my brother a month ago, and he's like, yeah, he's in sales, and and he yeah, he wants something else, and and he's like, you know, I I uh, I just don't want to. I'm making good money. I don't I don't want to take a pay cut, and I just wanted to smack him. Yeah, You're like. You're in your twenties, yeah, you whatever. Jack wagon, like yeah. you can get past that. <laughs> yeah, you'll get past that. You'll, yeah. you'll probably be making more money, you know, before you know it over here. That's like, the trap, though. You know, that's the trap. That's the trap. That's it. Especially with sales, they just really get right in. Yeah, and then you're you're you if you adjust your cost of living to that standard, yeah, game over. Yeah, get married, have two kids, yes. buy a house, get a mortgage, go do all that at eight percent. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's your life. You're, you're in it. Yeah. And I think that, you know, you ever talk to salespeople and there's very few that are extremely passionate about like that process. Mm-hmm. And, and generally they're not like a, a sales rep forever. You know, they'll end yeah. up moving on and doing something. something or or like. they, they bounce around. Yeah. They're a sales rep, but for, you know, they're just a hired gun. Yeah. Like they go, they go wherever the money's but, at. But, you know, most salespeople you talk to are like, man, a couple more years and I'm done with this. You know, yeah. I'm tired of this grind. Uh, yeah, one of the only places consistently is that I that I um, meet people that have been in sales forever in, within the construction industry is uh, Caterpillar dealers, yeah. the cat dealer folks. Mm-hmm. Just, they stick around forever. Yeah, it's it's a good gig, really good gig. Yeah, they they seem to have quite a few long term salespeople. Yeah, over there. yeah, and they don't they don't seem like they hate life. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe it's all. Maybe it's all a, a, just a, a show, but yeah. I, I don't know. I've met quite a few of them now. It's like, I actually think you guys enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think when they get into some of those like different account manager roles and whatnot, that that's really not that bad. You yeah. Know, that's, yeah. That's a good yeah. gig, you know? Yeah. So, um, so was, was the company that you, that you went to work for, was was a lot of the work uh, post-Katrina? Did, was, was there any infrastructure work? How did that work out? I know- in some, when something like that happens, uh-huh. there's these bigger companies that come yeah. into play that specialize in disaster response. Yeah. And they do a lot of the work. Right. Yeah. So there was definitely that, you know, so the cleanup happened. But, yeah. you know, there was a lot of cleanup in levy, like right after. And that stuff like drug on for a while. And the levy stuff, the levy work drags on forever. It's still going yeah, on. Yeah, it's still going on. I mean, yeah. you know, those things are constantly settling. So. Was that 2005? Five, yeah. 2005, yeah. yeah. Almost 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> But the, you know, that work all started, but I mean, the cleanup work, they got that done relatively fast, but then you ended up with a lot of empty shells and, and yeah, especially yeah. in some areas, yeah. some of the areas that were hardest hit and like, um, big residential areas that just, you know, have been, you know, tear down all like lots of houses and then build back or yeah. so some of that, but 
there's still some areas that are you know damaged that you like you'd heard. be surprised yeah. it's like whoa you know the uh project out in new orleans east where the six flags was like it's they've tried to revitalize it three or four times now and they're finally on a new plan it's crazy we'll see you know i don't know i hope it works yeah yeah that I, I, I didn't, I, I'm not really old enough to remember all of that either, but it's, uh, like looking at it after the fact, you don't consider how important flood water management is yeah, <laughs> and, and, and infrastructure design is and city planning is until something like that happens. Yeah. And you start to recognize, whoa, like this is, this is in like the devastation that can occur Yeah, is, is no joke if one thing goes wrong. Well, you know, I think we learned a lot in the city, and they did a great job investing. Corps of Engineers put a bunch of money in, and they have all these pump stations. You know, I, I know it's, like, usually depicted as, like, we live in this big bowl, and I think that is, like, relatively yeah. true. I haven't gone out and verified it myself. But I but think like they exaggerate it. just a few feet, isn't it? It's not, it's not in by some much. areas, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's not, not like you're, you know, whatever, 30 feet below sea level. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. So it's not yeah, that bad. Yeah. But, um what one of the issues is that we have is is we pump all of our rainwater or at the time we we're pumping all of our rainwater to north to lake pontchartrain so you have all these canals mm. that you get rainwater into and then it eventually gets pumped out into the lake not into the river so mm. that was a big so difference. it's all sitting there yeah so it's like sitting there and it's got to yeah. get to these like and so it just backs up and backs up, and yeah, up you yeah. know and yeah that's what ended up happening and then when the uh, you know Katrina was weird because it pushed all this water up into the lake, and then it was high, mm -hmm. and then the levee broke, mm -hmm. and water came in, and then it wouldn't go out. You mm -hmm. know, so it was like a lot of complication there. But you know, we have it, it's it's really crazy when you when you come to New Orleans, and you start to look at and like really realize how many like ditches and canals and like water structures that you have to just move all the water. Because sure, it's it's just true. I mean, we we don't have any elevation that's gonna bring it you know down the hill and into a creek where it's supposed to go and that's what it does you know like here in nashville i love it because y'all probably could get rain and the rain's like running off the site and like going where it's supposed to go you know yeah. so we, we, you know if it rains on us and we're flat and it's like okay well tomorrow's gonna be a wash well new orleans is like the drain the end of the drain for like half of the united states yeah <laughs> like, like most most of the drainage within the united states ends up in yeah. one way or another comes down that river yeah. yeah it comes down that river yeah which is crazy yeah yeah so, and it's wild too because the river you know the last year and a half has been at all these crazy low levels uh, you know that's been a little while really yeah and so you know material costs coming down the river you know we get all of our stone from upriver you know we're going to kentucky uh, getting stone really so, so yeah. all your aggregate comes in by barge well stone so, stone yeah but we have sand you have sand. endless endless amounts of sand. endless sand and then we have a lot of gravel you know we have a lot of different rivers and they'll go mine out around all those rivers and so you get gravel around i got you but it's you know doesn't always work not for the design yeah but i didn't think of that you guys i guess there's no quarries in new orleans no yeah. No, no. But north, you, you know, you go on the North Shore, and then you could you could just go on like Google Maps and go look, and you could see like these areas that are just completely dug out. Wow. You know, they'll just go dig all the, all the gravel, and then sometimes do a good job of reclaiming the property. Now, I think they do yeah. a much yeah. better job. But I mean, you can see some of those old areas where they just destroyed it. Yeah, you know, it's like not not good. That's interesting. Yeah, I I when I was down there too to see that dredging project, I didn't realize that. The, the river itself is extraordinarily built up. Yeah. So the, the core over the past century plus has been building these enormous, has basically been constructing this channel mm -hmm. out of what used to be this naturally occurring river, the Mississippi. Yeah. But the Mississippi is, is engineered at this point. Yeah. Like there's locks and dams and, and even, I mean, from New Orleans to Venice, like just the levee structure yeah. that they've constructed along that. And that's why they were dredging down there is because it's, it's, it's so effective that it just flushes all of the sediment straight out into the ocean now. Yeah. And is, it's not settling over the delta. Right. So, so the whole delta is eroding. Yeah. Well, that's where, you know, there's an awesome author that, and I'd have to remember his exact name that like works at 
Tulane. It's a guy that works at Tulane that's just mm. done all these great like studies and wrote some books. Got awesome YouTube videos. If you really want to like see and learn some more about that, it's just like mind blowing, you know. But yeah, you're right. I mean, look, the, where the levees are used to be all the areas that when the river would flood, it would come up, yeah, sediment would yeah, come out, settle over. And yeah. then, so like typically, if you're close to the river, you are higher. Yeah. So where I live, you know, I'm maybe a mile and a half away from the river, uh, but you know, we're above sea level. Yeah. Not by much. Yeah. I think we're like a three or a four. Sure. <laughs> you know, sure. It's not, yeah. it's not gigantic, but yeah. it, it is big enough. Yeah. Know? Big enough. That's yeah. all you need. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you, you started, you said 2015? Yeah. 15. From, from nothing. So we start with nothing in 15. We get some small projects tied in with our commercial side. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the goal there, or my background always was heavy DOTD, you know, in municipal work. So, um, we worked all those projects and kind of ran that cycle, you know, with the private uh, work and even worked for some other general contractors along the way early on. And then we got to enough scale that we could say, okay, well, let's go do it on our own. Let's go bid more DOTD work. Let's go bid more municipal so work. So that plan, and you said the, the, the main goal is diversification. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, it wasn't to serve the general construction company. Nope. It was, hey, if there's opportunities that make sense for both parties, mm -hmm. great. And as we start, as we get started, there's some opportunities yep. here, but the goal was always to go beyond the general construction. Company. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we did that. You, you know, I, I think I looked at some data the other day. I mean, now we're doing 75% of our work is outside oh, wow. of the, um, outside of the general contracting business. Yeah. And then of the 25% that's left, only like half of that is with our, uh, commercial, side. the, mm -hmm. I mean, so it's, it's really even more, but you know, if you go ask me what I want to do more, I like, I want to be a contractor. Sure. I, I want to control my own destiny. It's good to, cause then, cause you see companies, it's tempting to rob Peter to pay Paul sometimes. Yeah. Like, Hey, hey this side of the business is what's paying the bills right now. So if you guys could, you know, do this or that. Yeah. And, and you kind of have to go serve the bigger part of the business. But yeah. If, if, but if you're really on your own, you can control your own destiny. You have to have a plan that everybody's in agreement with, sure. you know? And so like in, in that plan, you know, we, we know that sometimes you're going to go do some work on the commercial side. That's not as much margin as maybe you could go get elsewhere. That's okay. You know, because it's a bigger picture. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, but maybe they need a more sophisticated contractor and that's what we typically feel that we bring is a more sophisticated contract. So they need somebody else to go do that because if they go a different direction, then maybe it's not going to be as seamless for them. It's going to be a, a harder project on their end. I got what you. we like to do is when we come in there, like, hey, I'm bringing a team, you know, so my whole team is coming in and we're going to execute just like you guys execute. You go look at our project execution map and it's not that different between the two of us. So, you know, you don't have to worry about, oh, do y'all have it? Do you have your submittals? Do you have, you know, whatever it is, like y'all planning? Do you, you have yeah, this it's more seamless. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, yeah. hey, y'all don't worry about this because we got it. Hmm. It's the, the version that we usually take. So yeah. it's like you don't even have to manage us. Tell it. It's but, interesting. Yeah. What what kind of um, uh, work is going on right now in New Orleans? So, I mean, it's still, you know, hotels have slowed down, you know, after COVID, of course, mm -hmm. you know, hotels slowed down, but maybe those are picking back up a little bit. I always forget, like, tourism is a really, really big, big part of the economy down there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, we've got a lot of multifamily stuff right now. Yeah. I mean, that's just, I think it's big everywhere right now. It is big everywhere. And then we've, uh, we've got some uh, industrial work too, which is good. So industrial. we're doing some, some big warehousing for uh, some clients. It's actually, we're building it out at the NASA facility out there in the East. Cool. NASA's out there. Yeah. I feel like NASA's in a lot of places that you don't realize. Yeah. Like I never knew like um, Huntsville, Alabama, for example, yeah. they have a huge presence in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm like, I never knew. Yeah. I never knew NASA was in Huntsville, Alabama. I think that's in that they're like, well, besides Florida, isn't that they're like base? That's the place. Yeah. Like they're, it's, it's, it's so much the place that they're, they have, there's a rocket at the rest stop. Mm -hmm. It's a rest stop, just interstate rest stop, giant rocket. And this, this, it's not like a little model. It's a rocket at the rest stop. You won't miss it. I've been, so a long time ago, I, th I think you could go like do the tour out there too. They have like yeah. other facilities and stuff. I did it before when I was a no, kid. Not now it is. Yeah. The FBI, FBI set up down there now. So yeah, oh, yeah. No more. you can't even look at it. Uh, yeah. That stinks. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, just uh, New Orleans is just such an interesting 
market yeah, all around. It is. Um, and so what's, what's the work on the, uh, is there a lot of DOT work or DOT has like, been doing pretty good. I, I mean, another thing that they have that's good and it's, it's heavy, it's heavily, heavily serviced too is, you know, we got the river and you got all the petrochem and like plants, whatnot, uh, all up and down the river. So from New Orleans to Baton Rouge, it's like, yeah, nothing, you know, I love, I love looking around. I think I was doing it the other day on Google earth, just looking around down there and seeing all of the plants. Yeah. There are so many plants like. Houston, Corpus Christi, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, like the whole Gulf Coast yeah. is just littered with these refineries, chemical plants, you now LNG terminals, yeah. yeah, just monster facilities. Yeah. And I don't know what any of them really are, no. but I love looking at yeah. them. I, I'm like right there with you. You look at it and I'm like, that's cool. I wonder what they do. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. Even though it might even be a familiar name, like, yeah. and when you find out, you're like, ah, that's not really what I thought they would do over there. Yeah. Yeah, or they yeah they explain it to you and you still don't understand. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. you just kind of nod your head and like yeah. smile, like yeah, no, totally. And, yeah, but those they're always doing something. You know, there's a lot of work over there, and uh, you know, it it's a good market to be in for mm. sure. But you know, you we locally or like in the New Orleans area, like Greater New Orleans area, we got enough work there that we don't have to do go too much further right now. Yeah, and you know, expansion plans would definitely be to get outside and go get into some more of that industrial work, but it's sometimes a hard barrier to entry. So, well, because it's not always based on your numbers no. in that world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so if you're not in the club, yeah, you don't even get an invitation to bid the project. Like yeah. you could be the lowest bidder and oftentimes they don't care. Yeah. About some of that. Yeah. They're not as interested in that always. Yeah. So yeah, they, they big, 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 big on safety. That's yeah, well, and that's why it's like a company I never understood. So I would look at like in college the ENR four hundred list, right. and it's not, it's not the most bulletproof list out there because uh-huh. it's just based on revenue and it yeah. doesn't. It, it, it anyway, Bechtel would always be number one or two, right? And I'm, and I, but I, I would just sit around and think like I've never seen, I've never seen a Bechtel truck. Never. Like I've never seen a Bechtel dozer. What where, what where do these guys they? do? Where are these guys? Yeah. Oh, they're working in these plants. Mm-hmm. Like that's their whole business is these chemical plants. Yeah. <laughs> so of course I'm never gonna see them because they're they're just off in this world that nobody in the public ever sees. I yeah. mean, it's almost like a military base. Mm-hmm. It's just you kinda know it's there, you see the fence around it, but you're never going to see what's beyond the fence. Yeah. Very difficult to get in. You yeah. Go through all the training, site orientation. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, so, you know, some of that's like, okay, well, how do I even, you know, go figure out, you know, what's going on inside? Like, how mm-hmm. can I go get to bid on a project? You know, there's sure. yeah. obviously a lot of ways and like that you go interact with these people and go yeah. Yeah. get your foot in the door, but it's pretty tough. It's tough. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's tough. Yeah. And, um, and everybody wants to do it. So, you know, they got a list of contractors, you know, a mile sure. long, you know, and so- that's the other thing that keeps everybody that's in there on their toes. It's like, hey, guess what? You don't do a good job. Like, happy to move on to the next one because they love to be in here. Mm-hmm. You know? So, well, um, so how many folks do you have now within your side of the business? Uh, we're probably like seventy five, and then we do good. this, um, like temp to hire, and we kind of run a, a group through this these temporary labor services for a while before we actually hire them. We do like sixty days there. Really? Yeah. Just it's like As, a longer interview, and it's like that version, like you don't have to go through the process of like paying to drug test them and do all this other stuff. The temporary service is doing it, and so they, but but they have an understanding that hey, if this person works out, we want to hire them full time, yeah. and then you pay them the fee or whatever it is to do that. I bring the people, so and I can take them at the whatever days. So, so you, I cut you feed the them. people into their it's, organization. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, and so they make the markup on them during the whatever days, and they're good with it because they didn't have to go spend the money to go recruit and attract sure. and like, get that person. So. Yeah, yeah, but it it it's worth you paying because yeah. it eliminates some of the risk. Yeah, well, it just allows you to have like these longer interviews of like, sure. are they going to be good or not? You know, so you do two two months uh-huh. of it, you know, and then you could say, okay, well, is this person going to be consistent enough to come to work on time every single day for yeah. two months? You know, or whatever yeah. it is, or like really, you know. Go work hard for two months and always be, you know, of added value, you know, so versus, you know, you go hire them on and they're no good. And then after a week, you're like, all right, it's time to get rid of them. Has that worked out pretty well? Yeah, it's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty good. 
Sometimes people don't make it through the process. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. What's we, the time to do? Um, you know, we've, we've done something similar with our business. Our business is completely different, obviously. But with um, anybody that we can, we like to have them as an independent contractor mm-hmm. and give them a legitimate project within the business mm-hmm. and pay them, you know, whatever we'd pay a contractor mm-hmm. and just evaluate them based on how they do a real world job within our business yeah. before we hire them as as much as we can do that is like we like to do that because mm-hmm. it's you can you can talk to somebody all day long but actually having like seeing them do the work and seeing them and, and seeing you know someone can show up on time one day someone can show up on time maybe even five days in a row but if you get you know if you get them for a month yeah get them for two months like you yep. can't hide forever, and that's yeah. now you're spreading it out. You can't hide at that point. Yeah. So you know what you, you you somewhat know what you got towards the end of for sure. 30, 60, 90 days. Well, one of my favorite new sayings is you can't fake hard work. Sure. And so you need some time to see that, and you know because maybe you could fake it for a little while. Yeah. yeah. But it comes out. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the people that are working hard are going to see that you're faking it. It's gonna it's gonna happen. And so you know that's why I love. I love these things, and, you know, these, these different systems like this, you know, we got this with our temporary employees. I love having a bunch of interns. I don't know what, like what other companies do, but yeah. my group alone, we had six interns this year, you know, which is a big number, you know, from Tulane or no, we got a lot over. from LSU and then LSU, we got some, LSU, we actually LSU. do a good job because we have our Nashville presence here and we have, uh, our market leader here, uh, came out of like the Virginia tech system. So we go over there and recruit well over there. And so we had some people come down from Virginia Tech. And so we've we've gotten a lot of good good people. And actually I have one from UNO where I went. They started a urban construction management program a couple of years ago. Mm. And so we have one intern from there that uh is gonna continue working with us. But you know, same thing. It's a couple month job interview and it's not like we don't pay you, you know, we pay you well to come interview with us. Yeah. And at the end, um, you know, this year. Of the six, I think we ended up offering three full-time positions That's pretty good. for when they graduate yeah. in May, yeah. and then one to just continue working with us, and we'll offer him two if he does well. You know, so we all of our great people that we have now have really run through this program that that we have. The in, the internship thing is a win-win too because it allows them to interview you. Yeah, it's no obligation. Yeah, and so I did that through college. I worked for five different construction companies, mm-hmm. and that was the advice I was given uh, by Rich Pearson when I was 18 was go try go try different things because they're within construction. There's a lot of different things you can do. And so I think the first decision you have to make when you go into school, they don't tell you this, but it's, hey, there's three pathways. There's vertical construction, buildings, general contractor, residential construction, houses, big home builders, custom home builders, and then civil construction. Mm-hmm. That's moving dirt, putting concrete in the yeah. ground, like building shit. Yeah. And m- most construction programs are geared towards the first two. Yeah, for sure. General contractors run circles around civil contractors when it comes to recruiting out of schools. Yeah. Residential is close behind because it's in some ways more consolidated and they spend a lot of money on it. Like the school I went to was the Delhi Web School of Construction. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can guess how many people they like what what that school is geared to Mm -hmm. uh civil construction is kind of on the back foot um but that that's kind of like the first thing you need to figure out and and maybe you don't know so it's like try working for a general contractor for a summer okay hey yeah buildings kind of sucks okay then go work for a road road wow you know i liked roads but i actually liked the structures we were doing okay then go work for a bridge contractor next right yeah you kind of want in the middle (laughs) yeah yeah you kind of want to use it as a way to to figure out what you like too uh um but yeah i i think internship programs i i could not be more of an advocate yeah. For, for that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. And, and look, if it, the thing that I see it more often is companies that aren't doing it. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, you guys got to go do this. You know, like the cost is, I'm, compared to everything else, the cost is low. The cost is low, but it requires effort. Yes. And it requires thought. Yeah, you have yeah. to have a plan and, and you have to be deliberate about it. Uh, and I just don't think a lot of companies are geared up for that. Yeah, I could definitely... 
agree with you there. I yeah. mean, you, you have to have a plan. You have to have the buy-in from the leaders that this is important to us. Mm -hmm. And so what we saw a bunch of years ago, uh, we did a good job recruiting and had a good internship class. And then we let off the gas. And then we, have a, we had a gap a yeah. couple of years. Yeah. And then ever since then, before we like got back on it and then started recruiting hard through intern the program again. And then we got the next generation of like really good employees that you know came out of that that revitalization of, of the internship program. And so since then we're like, never again. Like you can't let off. When you say recruiting good, like what does that look like? How do you go? About I mean, it's it? just a lot of, you know, effort it beyond just like showing up at like construction interview and day. Like you gotta do more than that. Sure. You know, so and then the other thing we do real well is like, hey, all of our good interns or all of our good employees that have you know, whatever the fraternity brothers or classmates or whatever it was, like, go find all them, like, go help us get there. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing about recommendations is you're not going to recommend a shithead. Yeah. Like you're going to make sure that, Hey, if I'm, if I'm going to put my reputation on the line, yeah, gonna it's going to sure. be somebody that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's gonna be somebody good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you, how do you recruit in general? How have you been able to attract those people into that temporary service to evaluate um, them you know a lot of it's relationships still yeah you know you just it, new orleans like as big as it is it's small especially mm -hmm. in the construction industry i'm sure it's you know yeah, I'm sure. it's i mean there's it's the same people all, all over you know so you know them mostly and uh there's some new ones you know new people that come around too but mm -hmm. in general you know they the other thing i'd say is we have a good enough presence like you, we do a good job if you go around you see us see our signs like see our equipment see you know yeah, projects yeah, we're yeah. doing you yeah. got enough of a name that it, everybody always says, man, you guys are working everywhere. It's like, yeah, but somewhat. But we also just have signs up on everything we're doing and sure. market it well. And, you know, I'm a big believer in a lot of the talks that, that you've always, you know, pushed to. It's like, hey, grab those cat stickers and tear them off the equipment or whatever. And I like, just, put your name it drives on me it. nuts. Yeah. yeah. Why are you advertising for? And it's like, you, I know a cat excavator is a cat excavator. Yeah. I don't need to see cat on the side of it. Yeah. And they, they claim, you know, the nicest part of the machine, the counterweight yeah. for their stickers. Like, get that out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Put my sticker the, on there. The only good news <laughs> is they still use the sticker. So we, yeah, we exactly. got a bunch of Volvos yeah. and it's like in the counterweight. Like, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you get to play second fiddle. Just on the back lots of Bondo. Yeah, just cover just, the whole thing in Bondo. Yeah, add extra 2,000 pounds yeah, to the counterweight. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I posted something yesterday I, I, and I didn't expect it to be so incendiary. Um, so we just did about 11,000 miles across the yeah, United yeah, yeah, States. Yeah, so we, we saw a lot and I passed through a lot of construction projects, a lot of construction projects. I didn't know who's doing the work. Right. And, and me, I'm just curious. I'm like, you know, who are the contractors around? Who's doing this? Who's yeah. doing that? And, and, um, you know, if I can know which contractors are in, which in, in re which region, you know, when people are coming to me and saying, Hey, I'm, I'm moving to Minnesota. Who should I go to work for? Right. Oh, I would go to work for Vite. Like this is, you know, yeah. I kind of like to know who's in each region. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, a lot of contractors. I just had no idea. And so I, I, you know, I, 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 um, I'm still trying to figure out how to deliver a message in an effective way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not always very effective. I'm very passionate about this world. I, I just love, 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 love the dirt world. And everybody's like, what are you going to do next if Bill were to go away? It's like, I would just do something else in this world. Like, I'm, I'm never leaving. Right. I don't look at real estate. I'm like, you know what? That looks pretty cool or anything else. Like, this is it. This is it. Um, so I, I get excited. But, but I basically said, like, hey, it, it, you have all of these people driving by your job sites every day. You have all these billboards. All these companies are paying to advertise for their companies. And, and, and you have all of this equipment, these, these trailers, all of this stuff that could provide you all of this brand recognition, and yet you're not taking the opportunity to do so. And in, in the same, you'll say, well, we don't need to advertise. We're low bid. It doesn't matter. And then in the same conversation, they'll say, we can't find people. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, come on. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Like, Maybe we're not advertising to get work. Maybe yeah. we just want you to know who's doing this cool project well, over there. And then, and then a lot of people said, well, they just don't want people to call their office and complain. But what's one of the biggest problems of the construction industry right now? Negative perception. And so maybe that's an opportunity to talk to people to talk to the end user of the product and right. say, hey, yeah, I understand you're frustrated. 
here's why we're doing it this way, right. just so you can understand it from our perspective. Yeah. And maybe that's yeah, one conversation at a time. And most people probably aren't all that rational. But if they're calling you, they care about something, that's an opportunity to just talk to somebody and, yeah. and correct that perception. Yeah. But it's it's such a traditional mindset. And then this morning I point out, you know, who's built more interstate miles than anyone else in the United States? Peter Kiewit. You see a Peter Kiewit job, you know it's a Kiewit job. There's no mistaking whose job it is. That's right. It's Kiewit. You know Kiewit's in town when you see their damn yellow pickups. I see their yellow pickups around here. I'm like, oh, they have something else going on. And when I see more and more yellow pickups, I'm like, yep, something's going on here. Sure as shit, they're replacing the bridge downtown right now. Yeah, I looked like, at it yesterday. Yep. I was, yeah, I was pretty right cool, down huh? there. Yeah. yeah the, the crane they have down there? Yeah. <laughs> I was up top right by the art museum and I just watched for a minute. You know, like, you got to give kudos where kudos are due. And like, they keep a very clean job site. They're so buttoned up. Man, they're, yeah. they're like squared away. Well, they they got that job. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a perfect keyword job. Yeah. Like, they have a, a, a very specific window to replace a bridge that's on Broadway, downtown Nashville, over multiple railroad tracks. Yeah. Like, yeah, th that's a keyword job. Like, right. that's that's what they do. But some guy then message, messages me, well, you know, that's not why Kiwi gets work. Their brand. They get it because they've been around for since the 1800s and they financed the jobs themselves. And it's like, yeah, I get that. But also, I went to work for Kiwi because of their brand. Yeah. That was it. I thought they were cool. Yeah. I thought their trucks looked cool. I thought their name was cool. I thought... The, the people wearing the Kiwit vest, I wanted to be one of those people. Yeah. That was it. Like, that was the sole reason why I made my decision to work there. It's worth something. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, and those comment sections are always going to like comment section. They're going to do I need it. to be careful. Uh, yeah. They're, they're going to do what I they're going to do. Yeah. You know, so, so it's funny. You guys posted a video from, from us like this past week. Mm -hmm. And then I think it got pulled down. Because there was like comment section was going crazy over like whether we're doing equality or not or right or whatever. It's like, yo. Was it? Uh, it's like tied into Megalog. Megalog. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. people lost their fucking minds about yeah. the Megalog. Yeah. And you know that that was like two seconds of the video. Yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. it's like yeah. they didn't see all of it. And, yes. And they didn't, you know, it, the reality is that yeah. we'd already gone over those T-bolts. You know, they were coming back over them after they broke the grippers off. You know, there's, but. I will say this, you know, like, is there more that could be done? Sure. Like, sure. No problem. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's... I, well, and, and that video, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I understood the, some of the comments, too. And some of the comments were, like, there's people that are assholes. But then there are also people that are helpful. Yeah. Like, hey, I've been doing this a long time. I just want to be sure. And I could be misunderstanding what's going on in this video. But here's the correct process. And I just want to be sure we're educating people on the correct process. Like... I appreciate a comment like yeah. that. I, I get that. Like, yeah. that's fantastic. And you can, I've had to remove videos and photos all the time that are correct. I know for a fact they're correct because I was there. But you can also see, oh, I understand how people are taking this in an incorrect way. Yeah. Because of the angle of the photo or because of how we put, like, the clip we took of this. Right. Probably not the best. And, you know, and it was fine. And I agree, you know, and the reality is like it exposed like on our end. OK, well, maybe there is a little better way that we could do this. Sure. But it also showed us that, hey, we had a better plan a long time ago and we had a process <laughs> and we actually were doing something I thought was like a little more innovative at the time. Mm -hmm. and so I guess I'll tell you the, the story here is, you know, if you go to the mechanic shop to go get your tire fix and change, you know, those guys that have these torque sticks. You know yeah, what those are? Yeah, yeah. So we came up with the idea of like, hey, we know what the torque is on these megalogs. Like, why do we have to go mess around with having a torque wrench that's like a precision piece of equipment that sure. you're going to bring out into these like sandy, wet environments that we end up like throwing these things away because we just destroy them. So we like came up with this idea that we're going to use these torque sticks as part of the installation process so that we don't have to have this extra piece of equipment and it's just going to overall be faster and like mm -hmm. go do the start pattern. No problem. Like, you know, you're going to put it together correctly and then you're going to use this torque stick to break them off. And like, it did show me that like, Hey, wait, somewhere along the way, like we lost a little bit of our quality control. You know? yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And it was eye opening. And so then it was a, a, a refresh on my side. It's like, okay, we need to get back to some basics here. But it, it just goes with some of the, you know, challenges that you have with yeah. growth and new people. And, you know, we've, we've done a lot of great things, you know, in the last couple of years, we went from 
20 million to 40 million going to do 65 million on the infrastructure side this this year yeah. and it's like okay well you need more people you need more training yeah you need you need the oversight the quality control well and and what you did at 20 million doesn't work at 60 million no. at all like everything breaks along the way everything yeah you you could have some like great individuals that could kind of pull it all together mm-hmm. you know at at some of those numbers that you know you could have your hands on everything well you start doing these other bigger numbers it's like wait i need more really good individuals to, yeah. to help watch and, and do all this yeah or we get got to get some good process and we got to get some good training and yeah. we got to have you know the culture of you know everybody's uh you know quality control mm-hmm. and everybody's watching us which is i think that is the most effective when i see that there's companies that i know that don't necessarily have safety people they don't necessarily have these traditional because the the ironic thing about having a safety person is, well, our company has a safety person, so they're in charge of safety. Right. And you you take the responsibility of safety and you put it over here. Like, oh, that's, that's the yeah. safety department. That's not my responsibility. Yeah. And when you actually deliberately within a culture put it on everybody, and I know you have to have, like, for insurance purposes and for some contract purposes, you have to have safety people now, which is a conversation itself. But but that they should be more of a, um, just another person there helping everybody along. But if you have it throughout the entire organization, right. that's when I've seen it be by far the most effective. Yeah. Build a culture to where everybody does. It. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that's also why, you know, I would never be uh, one to recommend having a quality control manager, mm-hmm. you know, like on what we're doing, because everybody should be doing it. Sure. I'm, I know there's projects that require it. You know, it's more complicated stuff than we're doing. But what I'm doing, we don't need that. But, you know, the, the reality is this is where, you know, the, the training platform is so great because mm-hmm. you could have all these pieces, you know, the process to go back through. You know, I went back through and, and watched the videos that are, that are on the platform afterwards. And I'm like, oh, this, like, okay, there was an original video and then there's been two more videos mm-hmm. that um, Jumper made sense. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, these are good. And like, Okay, well, where are my guys at watching these? You know, so that's going to be like what we send out. Like, hey, make sure we go back over this. You know? Sure. And if we don't like that, we'll just make our own. Like, if that yeah, isn't good yeah, enough, you know, like, yeah. let's go make our own. Let's go, let's yeah. go do it our way. Well, exactly. If it's like, well, our, right, our way is correct and this is why. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can make your own and, and do it that way. Yeah. yeah. But to, having, having the, the training platform has been good. That's and good. we, you know, we like it a lot. You are able to go get this like micro dose of learning. But as with everything, it's like, you know, it's tough to, to get everybody bought in all the time, you know. And that that that's where we're we're uh we have been struggling, but we're focused now and yeah. getting more and more and more and more focused is I think that's the biggest opportunity with it right now is the platform, can it be better? Yeah, but it works pretty damn good yeah. for what most companies need right now. Can the content be better? <clears throat> yeah, but I think any company could benefit from what's there. Yeah. You know? Like at this point. There's a lot there. Even like when companies say, well, we, it's just too basic. So I'm like, um, so leadership is too basic for your, so everybody at your company knows how to lead and communicate effectively. Yeah. Everybody like, and no one's struggling with mental health at your business. You know that for sure. Everybody is physically healthy and capable right now. Like there, there's a lot there that can apply to anybody, including myself. Like I've benefited from the, especially the leadership stuff on there. Yeah. Probably more than anybody that selfishly. Um, but it's, uh, I think companies have, and, and, and I don't think we've been clear about this. It's, it's by no means an easy button. No, it doesn't solve really any of your problem. It's just another tool. Yeah. And so that's where our process of how we come in and help a business make it successful. That's missing right now. We've kind of, we've kind of handed it off and we've, we've done, we've done what we, what we are obligated to. Right. But we really we need to go like seven steps further and yeah. really dig in with every business because it requires cultural organizational change for it to actually be successful. For sure, yeah. The um, the things I like, I think the version three put out the like automated reporting. Yep. So yep, 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 yep. I like getting those, and I'm like, you know, hey, 17 people, like y'all didn't even watch anything. Sure. Like, yeah. where are y'all at? Yeah. Like this, it's not that complicated. You yeah. Know? Like, come on, man. Like, yeah. And, you know, you're going to learn something is what I would say. Like, you may not learn something every single video, 
but that doesn't mean somebody else does it. And that's well, where I like it. And, and like the bar is really low right now. And so that's why I don't stress about the, our price point is, is, is it, is it best if everybody's doing it consistently? Sure. Yeah. But I, you know, at the, at our price point, I just need to help retain one person mm-hmm. in a one year period by teaching them something yeah. or prevent one mistake from occurring to, for it to pay for itself. Right. Like, <laughs> Because because mistakes are so expensive. Rework is so expensive. Turnover is so expensive. It's way beyond what we're actually charging. Yeah. So that's where it's like, okay, I can sleep well at night. I know there is value there, but now how do we get it, you know, tenfold? How do we really get it in organizations and not um and, and really help organizations become organizations that are learning and teaching one another? And this is just a tool to help them do so. Well, given like my own opportunity to go develop all this stuff on our, you know, by, by ourselves, like we probably can't do it and, or it was take a long time to do it. So sure. like, now you've got this platform that has this, all these topics generated. And it's like, if nothing else, it's a nudge in the direction of, Hey, let's talk about this. Let's watch what they're doing. Let's talk about how we do it. Yeah. How it's different. Yeah. And like, if you were like, does any foreman have, and this is the, the version that I use, how, how we do it, our foreman are watching these at our daily, are supposed to be watching these at their daily GSAs. And like, go pick something that's relative, to, relevant to what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have anything there, then just go pick something. It doesn't yeah. matter. Just watch something. Yeah. And like, then talk about it. So yeah. is a foreman by themselves going to come up with, you know, 52 topics a year to talk about? Or are they going to be like recycling some stuff through because they're not, you know, thinking of that? Yeah. And where we're getting a lot of buy-in is our guys that are really doing well. You know, the guys that are that, that are really squared away. They they got it. They're you know they're not aiming to be a foreman. They're aiming to be the next level guy. You know, uh-huh. so they're wanting to make sure they're training up their people. They're using this platform to help them understand more, and they're looking for their replacement so that they can keep going. Yeah, I I and I think that's probably one of the most effective uses for it is for safety meetings. Like yeah. like morning meetings are such a beautiful opportunity to. It's it's the only opportunity. Um, of the day that that crew has to come together as a crew, right, and to plan the work and to 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 learn more about each other. And and I know while you're working, you bullshit or yeah. at lunch, this and that, or wrapping up. But it's really the only opportunity that foreman or whoever is leading that site has to connect the crew, lead the crew, be effective, right, set the whole rest of the day up for success. And. I so, so, so rarely do I see those meetings used as anything but watch for ground conditions. We've, you know, it rained last night, slips, trips, and falls. Yeah. I see, all right, everybody has the PPE. Just keep up on that. You know, I've seen some people not wearing their safety glasses. I like, I get all that. I understand that, sure, that needs to be taken care of, but there's a lot more that it could be, but yeah. it, I don't see it very often. Man, when you go to a good you know, morning kickoff meeting. It's awesome. It's awesome. So and, cool. and you just know today's going to be a pretty good day. Yeah. Because you know, these guys are thinking ahead. They're looking at what the challenges are going to be. They're making sure that the team is lined out and knows what they're supposed to do. Yeah. They're not just pre- preaching to them the whole time. They're like, hey, what's your job today? Sure. Do you know what you're supposed to be doing? If yeah. this happens, you know, who's supposed to do what? And they're yeah. asking questions. They're yeah. engaging everybody. Yeah. And it's so great. Yeah. There's, there's, there's one company I can think of that every safety meeting I go to of theirs is just phenomenal. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm excited to be there. I'm excited to be at the meeting because yeah. it's just like, man, this is, this is amazing. It's, it's Rumble Construction yeah. in Arizona. And I've, I've been to others, yeah. but it's like the one I can think of that, and I've been to a lot of their meetings now. It's consistent. Yeah. Every single one, different projects, different leaders, but it's, you can tell it's just part of the culture. Yeah. It's awesome to see. Do they, do they have a, like a training that they do with those like foreman or they, or they must yeah, yeah to, to like get them there it, i mean there was one meeting i went to it was this it was a big job they're moving a few million yards but it wasn't complicated yeah. it was a channel they were digging mm-hmm. so you know pretty similar work every day uh but but it was like we were there on maybe a tuesday wednesday like middle of the week not even a monday mm-hmm. and um it must have been like 30 minutes yeah probably 30 minutes of of everybody and it was a pretty pretty good group, probably thirty people there, good sized crew, and they they were talking about everything. 
and just like really talking about the work and really thinking it through and what about wait, what's going to happen next week and hey here's where some things that happened yesterday that we probably want to be considering going forward and it was spectacular that's awesome it was just like wow i and then after after the safety meeting breaks up some people come to us specifically and they say hey you know, we, we talked about you guys out here a little bit, but just so you know, we've seen a few snakes around this area, around this area. So just be watching out because we want to make sure we know you guys are going to be on the ground. And um, and this it wasn't the supervisor. It wasn't the foreman. It wasn't the people who were there. It was just other people there just looking yeah. out for us. Like, oh, that's kind of I like this. Yeah, this is cool. Um, Yeah. Yeah. When done done well, it's like. Yeah. You know, it's it's just. It's just so good to have that, you know. Well, and it, it, it's also, f- it's fun for me too just to see like well-run job sites, well-run operations. Yeah. I just, I love seeing that. To see you're just on a site, <clears throat> it's the sites too, there's just no drama. Right. Everything is just clicking. Yeah. Everything is working exactly as it should. Everything is just completely buttoned up. The supervisors are typically very nonchalant. They're, they're, they're hands off because they don't need to be. Right. They don't need to be in the mix. They don't need to be on the radio. Everything's just like clockwork, just mm-hmm. running, running, running. I love seeing that. Yeah. It makes me so happy. A lot of times, and I started this a couple of years ago, sometimes those mornings are like real slow for me. Mm-hmm. And so like I am ready to go. Like mm-hmm. I'm a morning person. Like I am ready to get after. And yeah. so like I show up to these meetings and they're just like, a little more monotone and like everything's got, you know, and stuff happens at a slower pace as it gets started than, than like I have the patience for. Sure. And so uh, like a while ago, I'm like, man, I can't go to these meetings in the morning anymore. I'm like, I just make myself frustrated. I'm like, it's, and, and I, you know, you want to go jump in and that's like that worst thing you could do is go like break the chain of commands. Like, Oh, let me go tell this guy where to put that machine and how he should be filling up the day before, or like whatever the stupidity is. That's like making my blood boil. I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna put myself in that situation, but I think that there's still some version of that that I should be able to go do and uh, handle it perfectly. Uh, well, it's the, the challenge with growth, too. I mean, you went from being, you know, the guy literally doing everything within the organization because it started with you. Yeah. And now it's 75 plus. Where it sounds like it's going well beyond that at some point. Yeah. You just have to do less and less and less and less. And yeah. You, and you, you can go tell that operator what to do. Right. But then, you, yeah, you break the chain of command, and now you just set yourself back with the foreman or yeah. whoever else should be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just not worth it. Like, it's never worth it. And the thing that sucks is I don't, I don't like sitting in the office. That's not where I'm happy. Like, I am actually happy, way happier, like, out there, like, in the middle of, like, work that's being built and like seeing it come together and like offering help. And, you know, especially because I came up all the way through like that same role that our field engineers or project engineers are today. Like that's, that's what I did. You know, so I've walked in their shoes. I did all that same, same stuff as them. And I have a lot of advice for them, but I can't ever get out there to go give it to them. It's like, man, I'm, I am failing here. I got to figure out a way. Yeah. yeah. And so I had jobs twice this past week and, and it was fun, you know? It's yeah. Like, all right. Like, I'm blocking out time, like going forward. I need to block out, you know, however many hours and, and, and just go. No, I think that's really important. Yeah. I get, I get nervous too when I see, um, uh, I mean, I, 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 this, this happens to me all the time. Like I just, I just traveled for five weeks. I'm, I'm super in to experiencing the industry, but I'm very disconnected for our business. Yeah. It's like, and I talked with a, a businessman I have a lot of respect for, uh, midway through the week, midway through the trip. And he, <laughs> He he wasn't saying it was a dumb idea, but he was like, I hope you know what you're doing because you probably ought to be back home right now. Yeah. And the the irony is I can't inform the business if I'm disconnected from what's going on right. within the industry. And so I can inform our business on how we can help. Mm-hmm. But uh, if I go too deep into that, then I'm too disconnected from the world I should be a part of. But on our trip, we had an executive come out with us for two full days. And this is a guy, this guy is big time in this industry. Like big, big, big. I, had, I didn't know how big time he was. And I started talking to him about what he does. I knew which company he was at. And it's a big company uh-huh. that's found on most job sites in America. And, and I, was talking, I was like, oh, so you're, you're like the guy. 
And he's he's in the back of my pickup truck just driving around a job site because yeah. he wanted to get out in the field and heard we were going out, you know, outside of, of, of his area. And then he was with us the next day too. The whole, just curious, asking questions. He, like he wasn't, his phone wasn't ringing off the hook or anything like that. He was just with us for two days. Yeah. And I'm just like, that to me is so impressive because that's, that's somebody that has things handled. Yeah. Like if you have the time that you can set aside to go do something like that and not have to worry about everything burning back home. Yeah. Like, that to me is, that's, that's leadership. That's impressive. Yeah. And every time I see that, I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's great when you could do it for sure. This is like getting the busy season for us so because sure. we got strategic planning for next yeah. year is yeah. ramping up. So although our first meeting is whatever in a, in a month or something like that, to just like get started. Okay. Well, before that meeting, you need to be meeting and getting a, a little more dialed in on a, on an outline of, of where you think you're going to be, you sure. know? So it's, it gets tough to go balance it all. That's for sure. Oh, so it's way easier said than done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, we get to the office early, but, you know, we're there at the gym at the office. And then by the time we're, like, done with that, I'm like, oh, shit, I missed the kickoff meeting. It's like, yeah. all right, well, what do I do? Do I go to the gym at 4 o'clock in the morning so I could make it? I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's, like, the, the, the new plan, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, my, my wife and kids may not always love that so much, you know, but they're not up at 4 o'clock in the morning, so they'll be okay. Do you guys have an office gym? Yeah. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah, we've always had an office. Yeah, it's office gym. We've got a couple showers. We uh, recently added a whole dip. Oh, uh, but ooh. one where you just have to like manually dump all the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but you probably have an ice machine. Yeah, we have an ice machine right there. So, but we'll drain the whole, I mean, what, however many hundreds of pounds it is. Yeah. I don't know. I, I counted the other day when I filled it up. I did initially 10 five gallon buckets of ice in there. Damn. And it was like 38 degrees. Damn. So it was nice and cold. That's the, yeah, that's, the, you need an ice machine to make it. Yeah. economically viable yeah is it like buying that much ice no you can't there's, do it. there's no way <laughs> yeah we we drain that machine and then it takes all day to catch back up and uh -huh. then tomorrow be ready you know? sure. so it's like but it it is actually really good yeah to, to go get in there and i did notice it and you know I, i'm not an expert on it you somebody could go listen to Huberman podcast or yeah, whatever yeah, that yeah. wants to talk about all the like medical effects of it yeah and uh i did notice like we did it one day before we had a big bid and I was not like jacked out. Like, you know, like, cause usually like on bid day, I am like ready to go. Yeah. And, like I'm just like amped all the way up, but we worked out that morning, did that, yeah. you know, did the cold tip. And then that day I was just like a little more chill. And I'm like, whoa, maybe this has something like, I, oh, I don't no. know. It, uh, I, I hear Rogan talk about it a lot. And then Dave Goggins, he calls it like ringing out the rag. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I, I work out first thing, seven days a week. First thing, wake up, work out. No, I, unless tra like travel gets in the way, then I'm working out in the afternoon or evening, but it's every day. And I just like, I even thought about it yesterday. I just get so worn out first thing that I don't have energy to get worked up about shit the rest of the day. Yeah. So I think that, I think part of it's my personality, but I think a large part of it is just like, I just ring the rag out very first thing in the morning. Yeah. And then whatever comes my way the rest of the day, I'm just like, yeah, you yeah. know, we'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, I was happy to hear that at the summit, we're going to do some, uh, some early morning PT. Yeah. 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 Benjamin will probably be leading that, but yeah, we're trying to get no Jocko and company involved and yeah, let's do it. Whatever, like whatever yeah. it is. And the, the travel, you know, it's, it is always hard to like go get it in when you're traveling, it's like tricky. depending on like what you like to do and like. It's tricky. I do not like to run, you know, so like yeah. I, need, I need to do some like moving heavy weight, you yeah, know, or yeah, like some yeah. type of like CrossFit high intensity workout is, yeah. is my like go-to. But we came up with something and we all started doing it for a while where every single day you, we would call it 300. It was 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and 100 air squats. That's all you need to do. Do that every single day. That's, that'll kick your ass. Like yeah. that's, that's more than enough. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It's, it's like, okay, well maybe when you first start, it's like, I don't know, 15 minutes. Yeah. But like if you... You know, start to get efficient. Like that that's where it became fun. It's like we were doing it and it was like, okay, sure. who's got the best time? Yeah. And we yeah. would we would mess around and see. I mean, of course I never had the best time, but yeah, you know, some of the other guys would get some pretty low numbers there in the five minute range, you know, a set or two. You know, I'm like, all right, I can't do that. Yeah, a guy like a guy like me, I uh, have an advantage. Yeah. Not for much sure. weight to move around. Yeah. But that's like like the easy version of like you want to do something, like do that. You do that in your hotel room. You don't even have to go interact with the yeah. public, you know, like do that wherever you're at, you know, like Ten, yeah, ten minutes. Like you're good. But Thank that, like to the to this, the, I, I want the summit to be just a remarkable event all the way around. People yeah. even that, like, 
yeah, this is the future of the industry. Like, this is where we need to go. This is, these are some of the things I need to consider. Yeah, this is where I can do better. Like, yeah. I can, <clears throat> I want it to be really tactical. I've been to so many meetings in this mm. industry. It's just tired. And it's just talking about the problem. Yeah. And it's, 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 and a lot of times, a lot of times it's tone deaf. It's like, you haven't been out on a job site recently. Yes. Yeah. You're talking about in a way that isn't, Nah, it's just, there's a disconnect there. And we're trying to make this just very, very tactical. So that anybody coming in this, okay, I know exactly what I need to do the next day. Yeah. To carry my team, to carry myself, to carry my company to that next level. This, this is exactly what I need to do. I think no matter where people are at, there will be something for everybody there. Yeah. And I don't know what it'll be, but with the... With how we have it set up, it's our first time doing this, so maybe it goes terribly wrong. But the people Probably. we have, yeah, I, yeah, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Speaker lineup's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had nothing to do with it. It was yeah. all, it was all Dan. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. You know, so we were we were actually like on the fence, and we were maybe gonna do something different, and then uh, Ben and you both like reached out and like, hey, where are you at? Like, you're not you're not signed up. Yeah, more or less. And I'm like, okay, no problem. Like, let me go look at it. Let me see if we could adjust some dates. Sure. So I've got myself and two of my guys coming. Awesome. So, yeah. Perfect. I've I've been selling it. So I was up here in Nashville a couple of weeks ago with my peer group, and I'm like, "Hey, are you y'all going to this?" Mm -hmm. And they're like, "No, but we'd like to look into it." So I'm push pushing on them too. So good, maybe, good. Maybe I could help help get some people. Dude, I, we will take all the help we can get. We have, we have, I think almost 350 people registered right now, That's which good. is which is great. And yeah. so I think by next month we'll we'll get it sold out. And I want. I, I want to deliver a remarkable, remarkably valuable experience for everybody there. Yeah. But what I, you know, trip on my shoulder, young buck. I want everybody that doesn't come that said, no, I'm too busy to be like, I fucked up. Yeah. Damn. Damn it. All Could right. I went to that one. I'm going to make sure I come to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I like this because it's not, and, and I've been in the last couple of years, there's nothing wrong with these, these events, but you know, they have like education and speaker sessions and all yeah, that. Sure. But, yeah. you know, like yeah. I look at them and I'm like, I'm not going there. Yeah. And we're, it's just like, we're, we're doing it in a different way. Like yeah. I'm not, e we're not even really competing with anybody. No. It's just like, we're offering a product that is not on the market right now. Yeah. And I think that's why it's going to do well is because you can't find what we're bringing to this industry anywhere else. Right. It just, just doesn't exist. And But we're not going to talk about equipment costs. Yeah. We're not going to, we're going to talk about you know, how, how to do this tactical thing or that tactical thing. And we're talking about what we need to do as human beings yeah. to get the industry to the next level. Right. And you can't find that anywhere right yeah. now. That's why we're doing it. Like, I I said, no, I don't want to do this this year. Because I thought we needed to focus as, we do need to focus as a business. But they created the business case and they've pulled it off. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I was completely wrong. Yeah. Um, But, uh yeah, it's just it just doesn't exist anywhere, and we've kind of looked in the mirror and been like, okay, so if if they're not going to do it, if they're not going to do it, we might as well do it. Yeah, because it needs to be done. I think one of the biggest messages that you could come out of like this meeting with is like, take something back, but just realize like you got to get started. Yeah, especially on like yeah. any of these like leadership development, uh, you know, like anything that's going to like be talked about at this. Um, it's like, hey, just go get started, sure. and it's not going to be perfect. But yeah. if you just yeah. keep waiting for the perfect plan. You know, to come together. And uh, same thing with why it's great that y'all put it together this year. Like, hey, you wanted to push it. Mm -hmm. Dan, Dan and them came back and said, no, we're going to do it. And, you know, we're going to make it happen. Like, yeah. hey, maybe this year's going to be good. Yeah. But next year might be like, great. Oh, you know? yeah. Because yeah. you know, you're going to learn something. Well, that's, but that's where Echelon, having Echelon front that first day is going to be perfect. Yeah. Because they're so good at basically in a very disarming way, calling you out. And pointing out how big of a problem your ego is. <laughs> and I think that's what gets in the way a lot of times, because I think getting started starts with you admitting that I could be doing things differently. Yeah. I could be a better leader. Right. I, I am failing right now in, in, in some, some I'm, I'm succeeding over here, but I'm failing over here. And until you get out of your own way, you can't make anything happen. And so I think that first day, I think a lot of it's going to be about how you can be a better leader, how you need to check your ego, which their message, which is just perfect and yeah. delivered in such a brilliant way that it'll open people's minds up that first day. And then the second day is a lot of that tactical stuff that people can do within their businesses. So I, 
I think it'll. Yeah, it's gonna come, it's gonna be great. Yeah. Yeah, we're what it starts Wednesday and it goes through Friday. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, there's stuff Wednesday. Yeah, you know, Jason's having a golf tournament, uh, and he asked me if I was gonna be a part of it. I was like, I'll I'll hand out beers, but I'm yeah. sure shit not golfing. Yeah. Um I'm in that same boat. I like you want me to ride in a cart? I guess I'll do it. Yeah. I don't really want it. But we have Wednesday too. We're having a an FTX from Echelon Front. Yeah. And uh Is that the peer group day too? Mm, yeah, there's some other stuff going on I that gotcha. day. But yeah, the the FTX I'm most excited about. I've seen two of them before. And it's it's basically like really intense hands on leadership principles taught through simulated combat. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's the most wild training I've seen before. Yeah. And it's not, the point isn't to teach people how to be Navy SEALs. It's to teach them how to be effective as leaders. Um, but in, in a really high stress situation, yeah. it's just like, you know, exactly where you stand. Yeah. There's no hiding. <laughs> right. Y'all, y'all did some FTX with the team though, right? Like previously? Yeah. 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 We, yeah we've, we've. I feel like I've done one or two, maybe just one. Yeah, yeah. we ha- we had probably twenty five yeah. contractors at at one in in Nashville two years ago. Cool. Yeah, we haven't ever done it. Um, it sounds awesome. Yeah. They run them throughout the year too. Yeah, and um, but Randy, Randy, he said it's been the it's the best leadership training he's been to. Nice. He did it with some folks from Clyde last time. Yeah, I'm gonna miss all the Wednesday stuff, but I'll fly in Wednesday evening. I've, I've actually got peer group again, but we'll be in Salt Lake. So I'll finish nice. up Wednesday morning and then head over. What peer? What, what do you do peer group through? FMI. 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 Yeah. So it's like what? Typically like five or six contractors. Uh, we got a few more than that. I mean, I think one? a good group is about like eight, and that's eight. about max. Yeah. Too little, like you don't have enough input, and then too much, like you got, you, you can't get through. Sure. You know. So, but they do a good job. You know. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good. The yeah. reality is, like, just like everything else, you see, like you go there, and you share a lot. You know, you share a lot of information. You share a lot of. Like, open book, financial yeah. you know, type information, and you're yeah. benchmarking against each other across, you know, everything you're doing from HR to benefits and, you know, just in general, like ev- everywhere. And you realize, you know, when you talk to people, it's like, hey, we all have the same problem. And like, uh-huh. one of the biggest ones is like, you know, people, that's like the biggest talk that we have, you know, equipment. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest, or the second biggest, you know, problem that, that we all probably have is like, hey, how do you build a great equipment program? You yeah. know, and- you know, AEMP a- e- has like their version of it. You know, everybody else has mm-hmm. something like in between, you know, it's just like there, there's a gazillion different ways that you could do that, how you could charge for equipment and like, you know, like whatever, how are you calculating your rate? Are you charging a day rate or an hourly rate or idle time? You know, like mm-hmm. owner- ownership costs, operating costs, like, man, you just go look at it. There's like a bazillion different ways to do this. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's, it's been good to learn from others. And see how other people are doing things. I've 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 heard nothing but good things from the FMI deal. Yeah, it, it's interesting because yeah, it's it's um, uh, it's very well thought out. Mm-hmm. So they have you know you from Louisiana, and then they'll have a, t- a contractor from Texas. Yeah, and a contractor from Colorado, and a contractor from Seattle. You know Washington. It, they spread it out. Yeah, so you're never really. And then if you enter somebody's market, they kick you out of the peer group. Yeah, can't do that. It's interesting how they how they do that. Yeah, can't do that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So I think we're like California, uh, Utah, Austin, Louisiana, and mm-hmm. then we got some like Northeast, you know, South sure. Carolina, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and then like everybody mostly does like something similar. Mm-hmm. You know, not not everybody does you know the same thing. I mean, we're heavy into wet utilities and, and like we're probably <clears> the heaviest into that but we got a pile driving guy in there you know i mean it's just a little bit of everything yeah. so you get to learn learn some from them and how they do it and oh, that's cool then the way the businesses are set up whether they're you know um partner group sole proprietor mm-hmm. esop like however the hell it comes together and the challenges oh, they go with all that's like you walk out of there and yeah of even course, the structure yeah, of these businesses exactly it, they're all so different yeah you get to learn a lot yeah. it's it's really good from that end yeah so, yeah we came yeah. to nashville last time because it's you know again like we we're talking when we first got started you know middle of the country it's right easy in the for everybody to get to you know we loved it mm-hmm. it was it was real good so mm-hmm. but we're going to salt lake next time which will be nice in you know, you know october salt That's lake ought to be beautiful, perfect time to know? go so like perfect yeah. oh. we uh i was out there f- last month and 
we were with a company called BHI, and they're doing the Tiger Woods Golf Course okay. up uh, just outside of, like, in between Heber City and Park City. Uh-huh. It's up in the mountains, and it's overlooking the Wasatch Front. Oh, my God. It's just extraordinary. Yeah. And they're moving all this dirt up there. So just to see just the location yeah. is extraordinary. And we're going back in a few weeks because we have a meeting there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it won't be it won't be late enough to see the trees start to get nice and pretty. But October should be prime time. Huh? Prime time. Uh, I've never been there, so I'm, I'm never like, been to Utah. No, oh, really looking oh, forward to it. Yeah, oh. yeah. Hopefully, we could get out and you know not just locked into a hotel room, yeah, and conference center for a couple of days. We yeah. usually like yeah. when we go to host city. So because we have a contractor in the group that's there, we'll go check a job out or. Go do something. But we hosted in New Orleans and everybody got to come to the office, see how we do things. We ran through like our playbook basically. Of course, that always helps out to to really see the hands-on version versus like what's on paper, you know, that everybody submits. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. Yeah. The gym was always ahead. You know, we go take them on the tour. (laughs) I think that's a great thing. I I see more and more companies with gyms now. And I, I, for, especially for a construction company, I think that's, and just from a culture standpoint. Yeah. Physical health and wellness from an insurance standpoint, like, yeah. there's a lot of business reasons to have a gym. Yeah. Like, it makes good business sense. The other thing that I like is come work out. Let's go do something hard together. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's grind it out because well, we're all going to do this workout and it's going to suck yeah. like, for all of us. Yeah. But I'm going to cheer you on. You're going to cheer me on. And you know what? At the end of the day, we're going to like build a little more relationship when we do that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we shut the gym down for a little while because we had to move it in the building. It was down for like a couple months. We started run club. I hate to run, nice. but we ran, you know, so like nice. we'd wake up, we'd get there, still do the same thing. We'd run like through the neighborhood, like from our office, basically down uh, Chapatula's and then to Jackson and all the way to St. Charles Avenue and then like turn around. And come. That's sweet. So it was like, it was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah you know, it, it is. Yeah. It's like you'd see some like early morning sunrises as you're like coming back in. That's and, a uh, a cool town to run into. Yeah. That's a cool town to run Yeah. In. If you're on the right path, it's, if it's you're good. On, if, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to be in the right place. I went uh, when I was there. I ran, um, I ran to downtown to Bourbon Street. Oh, cool! And I was there probably. Uh, it was early. It was probably like four, four thirty in the morning. Yeah, it was very lively. Yes, very lively down you, there. You need like another two hours. <laughs> yeah, no, there was a lot going on down there. But at four, four thirty, you're getting some interesting folks. Yes, like that's 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 an interesting crowd. And so I went down there and I was like. You know, I'm going to, I've seen it. I'm going to leave now. I'm yeah. not going to hang around here. No. This is not, this is not the place to hang out at. No, that's a, that's an incredible you know, like place to be down there and just people watch. Oh, like I bet. I bet. 530 in the morning. Well, you know, if, it, yeah. like if you're, if you're up super early, you, yeah. know, like, that, you just like see like all this like stuff. You're like, wow, that's interesting. Like what's going on? Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of fun stuff running early in this town. Yeah. Cause everybody's here to get just absolutely blitzed yeah. and then i'm going to vegas tonight okay i'll be shooting tomorrow morning on the strip nice at about four in the morning what do you what do you Prime time las vegas paving doing the surface course for formula one. Oh, nice yeah that's awesome yes did you go to formula one when i was here a couple weeks ago uh that was indy oh that's indy, indy. Yeah, yeah. yeah i was out of town oh, it's a cool awesome. it's a cool event but it's not like formula one it's like I, and people probably would be upset at me for saying this, but I think you can just look at viewership numbers. It's like arena football versus yeah. the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like they're just two different things. Yeah. Um, and, and Nashville, it's a great race. Yeah. Awesome time. So much fun because it's right in downtown. You can walk across the bridge and then you're on Broadway. Yeah. I do like 10 out of 10 would recommend. But I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day. They said they looked up a pair of four tickets and the all expenses paid for the weekend, $250,000. So it's just a different, it's just different. Dude. Yeah. It's just different. And they, they only had 5,000 general admission tickets that were sold out immediately. And well, you can't get a hotel room. Like there's everything, the entire city's booked. Wow. You can't touch it. Yeah. Um. So, Man, but. It, you know what y'all need to bring back that I thought was awesome when y'all did it, when y'all went down to Broadway. That and, was fun. Yeah. yeah and y'all did the fun. question. People like, what is this? You know, what, yeah, that, that was, was actually really cool. Yeah. That's so, that was so outside of my comfort zone. But I had a blast. Go bring it back, man. Go go down to what's the uh, like old town 
uh, Vegas. Like, go go do it down there because there's ah, t- yeah. just a ton of characters. Lots out there. of characters up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully, I'll see you guys down in your neck of the woods one of these days. Yeah, man, come on by. We uh, love to have you. A uh, little different. We're not always on the uh, big dirt moving projects and big machines, but lots of holes in the ground with lots of yeah. complications. Well, I I love I love utility work, yeah. especially complicated utility work or just all kinds of conflicts. That's it. Uh, I, and I'm sure there's all kinds of conflicts. Yeah. Like there's probably all kinds of weird stuff in the ground yeah. down there. Um. Yeah. I'd, and do you, you probably groundwater pretty bad? Oh yeah. I'm sure it's just yeah, yeah. You're just working water all day. Yeah. Well, yeah. Groundwater. So you're always pumping. But then if you get into some bad areas, you know, we're well pointing and yeah, doing some of that. Which you know, it's, we don't do it that often. But you know, you can't do the job sometimes without it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. People don't understand like how complicated you know a project gets when you got running sand. Yeah. You know, it's like all right, yeah. well, dig that hole. It's gonna be filled back up. Like, I, and that's where you need to put that pipe. You know. Oh, I saw uh, there was a contractor in Florida. I forget who it was, but it was. I mean, they they had a they literally had a diver. Doing utility work, Whoa. because they just couldn't. You, you, the the water, there's so much water, yeah, that you can't pump it out, right? So they they were literally just putting the utilities mm. into the trench, you know, five foot, completely full of water, and the guy to do the to do the joints and everything was wearing a dive mask and 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 had 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 uh, an oxygen feed. Yeah, what? That's crazy. Yeah. We've had to do some of that before for quality control checks or whatnot, but yeah, yeah not, nothing yeah. to that effect. Yeah, but that's awesome. Yeah, All yeah, right. man, you come come on down. We'll uh, we'll go run around. Cool. We'll go check out some cool stuff. Right. Always some of that. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming by. Yeah, appreciate it. That's that. That's that. <clears throat> Time flies when you're shooting the poop. Yeah. Yeah, it goes quick.